Welcome to the Great Girlfriends Podcast, where we discuss life, love, laughter, and everything in between. We're your hosts. I'm Sybil Amuti. And I'm Brandon Daniel. And before we jump into this week's episode of the podcast, make sure you sign up for our newsletter at thegreatgirlfriends.com. And don't forget to leave us an amazing iTunes review. Yes, that is the payment for listening to this podcast. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Five stars all the way. Let's do it. Let's do it. What's up? What's been going on? What's new in your world, Sybil? What's new? Well, getting these uh, business masterclasses off the ground. Yes. (laughs) Um, And And I love the name Brave. That's such a great name. Well, here it is. Okay. This was something that God showed to me last year when I started the uh, Brave Growth Circles. Uh-huh. Um, was that that was the thing that was missing for people? Mm-hmm. Audacity, like like really boldness, mm-hmm. co- courage to step out and do things that are essential. Yeah. So Brave was something that I decided to focus on bravery yes. in every core area, yep. and it started with those um, growth circles. And now we're moving into brave business because mm-hmm. I want my sisters to make money. Yes. What, or I'm sorry, shmoney. Shmoney? Where the money come from? Really? Yes, that's Cardi. Cardi says shmoney. Oh, okay. And okay. I'm not even saying it like, okay. I'm not even saying it raw enough like how she says it. I swear she be trying to stay here. I'm just saying, like, can I know she a little bit? Can I, can I know a little bit? Okay. Can I all right, money. All right, all right. All right, all right. <laughs> but all no, right. seriously, great girlfriends need to. We need to be. We don't need to have to earn every dollar that we make. Right, and, right, and right. that's that's my my this year is like okay, our entrepreneurs are struggling so much because we ain't making no money for yeah, real. Yeah, absolutely. And and we could be making a lot more if we were smarter and more strategic about how we do business. So absolutely, getting this money and create multiple streams. <laughs> and. I'm trying to pack, uh, pick my hairstyle for the conference. Are you? Like, you know, new sim, who this? What, what are we doing for summer? So, I wish I could come up with a new hairstyle, but I think mine will be the same. Brenda, she <laughs> could totally do the same. You know what, great girlfriends? You may have caught a glimpse. Brenda's had her hair straight. Great girlfriends conference 2017? Uh-huh. You had it straight. Yep. It was so pretty. I loved it. Gotten so used to my hair the way it is, though. No, you gotten used to low maintenance. Low That's maintenance. the problem. There you go. That's the problem. Man just wakes up and just does a little crunch. <laughs> well, right crunch. now it's not quite right. <laughs> um, but yeah, this this was the hairstyle I've been waiting for. The wake up and I go. I have been and waiting just, for this hairstyle. Yeah. It's so awesome. I could just put on some mascara and some red lips and some foundation. I love it. I look like I've actually done something. It is great hair. It's Thank great hair. Me. But you know, I get bored. So I, yeah, I, get I, bored. I can't do I could I have to switch something. Something gotta That's give. Because your kids are older. My kids are older and I, I can do more with, with hair and stuff. I got more time to with play. These three, this three year old, I just yeah, need to be need able to, to wake up. up and look like I've done something. I know. And, and y'all should see her when she realizes she ain't touched it. She just does her hands in the middle. She takes like the four core fingers and she scrunches real quick <laughs> to kind of shape up the front. She'd be like, there it is. Uh, God of Hey. So conference is coming June 13th conference through 15th. Conference is coming. New York City. Yes. And I am saying publicly that I am going to have to contact Fee Noel. I want to feel breezy. Let me tell you something. That Fee Noel, like, she getting a full free commercial. She getting a full right free now. commercial. Fee, we love but, you. <laughs> like, I just love her pieces so much. Yeah. Right? They're so easy breezy. I just, I want to mm-hmm. feel feeish, And so I'm going to be doing a Fee summer. I love it. I, I think I got the perfect thing for you and her thing that will just look like slamming on I, I'm ready. Yeah. I mean, whatever I put on one of her pieces, I'm just, Fee, I just, this yes. is all love. I literally feel so romantic. I feel alluring. Yeah, I know. I feel like I'm, I am personified. Like, here she is. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So, Fee, I'm coming to see you, girl. Have, yeah. have my back. And you know I got to, got some things to cover because I ain't been in the gym <laughs> like I... You, you got to get in the gym. <laughs> You about to get in the gym. I got some things to conceal. You about to get in the gym. We're both about to be looking right and tight at the Great Girlfriends Conference. Yeah. June 13th through 15th, New York City. 
Sybil and I will be at the door meeting you guys with big hugs and yes. laughs. Yes. Um, and cannot, my kids are selling their lemonade. And, again. Your, and, and, and the Amuti kids are out here <laughs> becoming entrepreneurs at, you know, a very young age selling lemonade. So make sure you yes. have like $5 for them because I yes. think their prices went up. Their prices went up for sure. They yeah. weren't pleased with their revenue last year. Okay. So they had a goal. They came okay. a little under. I tried to cushion it, but they were like, no, no. They, the, gr- the great girlfriend should have bought. All right. Lemonade. And then Dylan was like, well, Sam, we said lemonade stand, but then we sold tea. Uh-huh. So we kind of, <laughs> she tried to blame him. I'm like, listen, the business will fall. If y'all don't stick together on this business. So then she's like, we need more things on the menu. Uh-huh. So she, they've been making a full menu. Oh, I love it. They are, they're like shaking their little money makers for real. They're out here trying to like come up this summer. So, I love great it. Great girlfriends, don't disappoint my kids. Oh my goodness. Y'all better buy that lemonade. So, so we're going by the venue today. Yes. And I'm so excited because this venue is a space that has never been used for an event. It's literally brand spanking new. Yeah. And it is so freaking gorgeous. Oh so. My God. I can't wait. So we have to get this podcast recorded because we got to go to the venue and before I get Scott. Well, let's make it happen. So listen, I'm excited because today our class is being taught by the illustrious <laughs> Dr. Dr. Like Dr. 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 <laughs> Dr. Pastor, Pastor Bishop Brandeis. <laughs> Y'all can't sleep, but I'm coming to the crowd. I'm giving a high five. All right, all right, all right. So, present, I'm coming to the stage right now, straight from Memphis, Tennessee, from the 901. Ooh. It's Brandis like Candace Daniel, baby. <laughs> I wish y'all could see this. <laughs> However, my hair is looking hot. Uh, Brandis like oh, Candace is in the building. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited because um, this is one of my favorite topics. And yes. if you know me, you know that. Cliff jumping is my favorite, favorite topic to talk about Uh because my life would look so much different. Mm. If I had never taken the jump, if I had waited until I was like fully ready for everything in my life, Mm -hmm. my life would look totally different from what it looks right now. And um, I'll even like even starting with, you know, making a decision to like go into fashion Mm -hmm. that wasn't easy because I was actually working for a home builder Mm -hmm. at the time and I was making decent money for my age for a 23 year old and um and making that decision and not taking any of the other jobs that they were giving me and deciding no if I have to move back to my parents home to do this I'll do that because Mm -hmm. this is what I've decided to do do I have any opportunities in front of me no I don't have any opportunities in front of me (laughs) have no opportunities in front of me but um but this is this is what it what I have to do and my thing is I think um I've seen so many things in my life I've seen you know my best friend since high school be healthy one day and the next day be like in ICU with lupus and her life changing in a matter Mm -hmm. of like a day I've seen you know one of my close friends mom you know, go to the store and being hit by um, a car that left her brain dead. Like, these are all things that, for Mm -hmm. me, between the age of probably 20 to 24, I experienced, like, three big things that really changed my life. And it was those two, and then it was my ex-boyfriend committing suicide. Mm -hmm. And so... I think before I was a dreamer, but I think those three things made me a cliff jumper Mm. because I said Mm -hmm. that at any point in time, my life can change. Tomorrow is not, you know, promised to me. And so I can either sit back and hope that things will happen or I can just, you know, go for it and see what happens. And is it the most, is it the easiest life to live? No, because I've made lots of mistakes. I'm always jumping and then I'm like, oh, crap. Um, but I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change one thing for the, for the world. And I think, you know, my sister asked me a question at an event that I did, um, in Memphis. Mm -hmm. And she said, have you ever cliff jump and crashed? Like, like fell on your face. Yeah. And so I had to stop and think. Yeah. Then I was like, I sat there and I was thinking like my mind was going like a little movie throughout my life. And I said, no. No. 
Yeah. God has never failed me. Yeah. Every single time I made a jump, it may not have been an easy landing, mm-hmm. but every single time he's provided me with the landing. Mm-hmm. And um and I'm still and I don't I don't think that the cliff jump stops. So I think that women out there, um, I love that a couple of weeks ago. Sybil spoke on um, branding and how to set your brand up and the strategy piece, which is so crucial Mm -hmm. and so critical for any business that you're going to have. But you can get all the strategy and you can have an amazing plan. But at some point, you have to execute that plan. Come on. (laughs) Right? Because... And then these are your strategy. These these (laughs) really tie in very well. But at some point... You have to execute the strategy. And Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we like plan and plan and plan and plan and, and, um, and and we talk about it and we write it out, but we never do it. Yeah. And by the time it's come to the place where it's time for us to do it, because we've gotten everything else in line for it, we're bored with that idea. And then we come up with a new idea (laughs) and then the cycle continues. Yes. Yes. And so... It's like you never fully execute the first idea before you start jumping to the second idea. So Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I always tell people is like, what's going to make a cliff jump exciting or what is a cliff jump? I always challenge people to like really think big Mm -hmm. because I think that the bigger you think on something, the more exciting it becomes for you. Yeah. And it encourages you to cliff jump because you're like, this is about to be so exciting yeah and you feel like okay this is actually worth the freaking cliff jump to begin with yeah. right right um, right <laughs> because like, don't, don't, do be, it. don't be jumping <laughs> off a, a curb <laughs> and how is it a cliff jump <laughs> jump I oh i got a logo done I know, that's actually not, to fail. That that is not cliff a cliff jump <laughs> that is not um, and I, I love that. I think a lot of times people get nervous even when I say cliff jump because they think that I'm like telling them to quit their job. And I yeah. am not yeah. telling you to quit your job. Yeah. That's not what I'm saying. But for me, you know, I had a job my first three years of HFR because it was how I funded my business. Mm-hmm. So cliff jumping for me was actually using all the extra income that I had left from my nine to five to fund my mm-hmm. side, my side business. And so that's that's just one thing for you to think about. And I want you guys to kind of think about, like, when what do you want to say about your life when you get to the end of it? Oh, my good Lord. That good because legacy. Because people are leaving here left and right. What do you want people to say? Yeah. Like, and do you want people to say that, oh, my God, she was such a great person, but... Man, she was so good at baking, but it's just too bad she never started that business. Or to talk about what you talked about doing, Mm -hmm. but what you never did. Yeah. And I think about, I have an aunt who, um, my aunt who just passed, she always talked about, like, she got an opportunity to go to D.C. and she didn't take it. Mm. And that was, like, a regret that she, like, always brought up. And then that's something how she could be rehearsing a different story. She could be rehearsing a different story. She could have been going yeah. over the story. I'll never forget when I went to D.C. Yeah. And pursued that opportunity. Yes. And that, 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 that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. To rehearse that. Yeah, you're so right about that. Absolutely. Yeah. And so dream a bigger dream to make sure that you're thinking about when you get to your end of life, literally visualize it. You're at the end of your life. You're in a bed. You know, maybe you're not mobile, but you're at a place where you're thinking back over your life. What Mm -hmm. do you want that journey to look like Mm -hmm. as you're looking back over your life? And then the next thing, what are the things that are holding you back? Mm -hmm. Because some of us, we make up this story and we have this narrative in our head about what's holding us back. And that's not what's truly holding us back. Let me tell you something. That is so funny because when um, I did that workshop in Memphis, we were talking, I was talking to the room and I said, let's be honest with ourselves. If we look outside the door, if you, if you look, if you get in your car, nobody's outside picking and talking about you suck. You can't do it. You're the worst. You'll never make it. You can't achieve it. You're hard. Like there, there's no one, there's no army rallying against you. There is no one rallying against you. You can no. sit at the table. You can you can do it. But but in our minds, mm-hmm. we have this. Where are these? Who are they? Look mm-hmm. outside. Nobody's mm-hmm. out there. Mm-hmm. Go, go to work. People aren't going across your desk talking about you're the worst employee ever. Like it's just not happening. It's not happening. So, so right. So what's really holding you back? What's really holding you back? Because it ain't it ain't external. 
And sometimes, Sybil, we're waiting on we're waiting on this big, huge yes. Like we're waiting on this uh, green light. I, I was with a young lady. I mm. spoke at an event, um, mm-hmm. the Fierce Fleeing Conference in Connecticut this mm-hmm. weekend. And this woman was saying to me um, that she wanted to be a stylist. And she wanted to work in New York, but she had moved back to Virginia. When she was here, she couldn't get any opportunities. And on and on. And so she said... Um, she said, you know, I really want to move back. I really want to get back in fashion, but I'm not really sure what to do. And I said, well, what are you waiting on? Yeah. She actually has a place to live here. Oh, wow. Like somebody here, like a family member she can actually move with. And I said, are you waiting for like a big green light? Are you yeah. waiting to get a letter in the mail to say that, okay, it's time to like make this move? Yeah. And she said, oh my God, I think I've been waiting for this green light. Mm-hmm. And I said, what, what green? I said, Here's, there's good. no certainty. Yeah. We'll be right back after these messages. What's up, great girlfriends? Who else has tried FabFitFun? If you don't already know about it, it's a seasonal box with full-size beauty, fitness, and lifestyle products. The box I received is epic. Each season's box features a variety of amazing quality brands like Tarte, Kate Somerville, Anthropology, Free People, Dr. Brandt, and that's just the beginning of it. Don't miss out because they sell out super fast. Check out www.fabfitfun.com and use the code GREAT, that's G-R-E-A-T, so you can save $10 off of your first box, making it only $39.99. Again, that's fabfitfun.com and use the code G-R-E-A-T. You deserve to treat yourself. Enjoy! Hewlett's Market, a brand new shopping experience built just for you. From the best books, soothing aromatics, vegan-based hygiene, organic skincare products, and more, Hewlett's Market has the essentials you need. Discover, shop, and share the best products all in one place. And all of these products were created by outstanding brands of color. From now until the end of May, visit www.hewlistmarket.com and use code TGG20 at checkout to enjoy 20% off select products just for being a great girlfriend. Shop Hewlett's Market today. And this is very special because the co-founder of Hewlett's Market is the better half of our co-founder, Sybil Amuti of The Great Girlfriends. So shop and enjoy. And people are waiting for pure certainty. There is no certainty. And you could have given her a green light and it would have been good enough. Like, it, you have to come to your own green light. You have to like, come to your own green light. Because you'll be like, oh, that person, it's easy for that person to say it to me because of X, Y, and Z. You always dismiss the credibility. So yes. no one can, because you could have said, girl, you can do it, go for it. And it still wouldn't have been enough to hold it. She has no. to, yeah, you're so right about that. How many well, of We are waiting on a green light. We're waiting on a green light. Yeah. And then for those of us who are in faith, those of us who are believers, mm-hmm. we're waiting for God to give us one big resounding yes. I, I've been waiting on a e- few emails from Jesus. <laughs> I'm like, so, Jesus, did you get the email? Did you even get the right email address? Did it go to spam? Where is my confirmation? E- I mean, honestly, I sat so many years sometimes doing the same right. thing. Like, is he going to call? Right. He's going to come through the radio? The bird? Right. Where is it? And and it, it was sitting in my spirit, but I wanted yeah. it. I wanted it picture perfect. Absolutely. I pre- yeah. Yeah. And I was like, like a cliff jump isn't gonna feel peaceful. So yeah. if you look, if you're waiting for peace to take a cliff jump, you're never gonna take a cliff jump. Mm, Every single time I've taken a cliff jump, I didn't had any peace about taking a cliff jump. That sounds insane. You, your adrenaline's rushing. Your chest is hurt. You're nervous. Mm-hmm. But. That's what faith is. Faith is he's asking us to take a step, but we're waiting on him to tell us to take a step. So then where does the faith come in? Mm -hmm. Because we can't, he can't say faith is an action, by the way. It's not belief. It is an action. And how do we then, what, what about this is faith? If he's saying, okay, here's your email that it's time to do this at this moment. We're, we're in lies your faith. Yeah. You know? Yeah, Yeah. And so it just, it just, I found that mm-hmm. it doesn't work like that. Sometimes, yes, we get signs. Sometimes there was, there was a time last year, actually, when I did the, um, I did a really big gala that was so expensive and you guys know, like, okay, I know how to raise like a decent amount of money for an event, but this was going to cost about four times the cost of my normal mm-hmm. events. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like if so much money, I won't even say how loud. <laughs> I won't even say it out 
out loud how much lot, money the event costs. Uh-huh. And at this point for me, my challenge is I'm like, no, I'm not doing events anymore for cost. Yeah. So I'm like, I've been at this thing too long to not make a profit. Yeah. So it has to make a profit. So I'm like, okay, so I'm supposed to make this amount plus the profit. I'll pass. I just said, I'll pass. I'm not doing it. I'm going to do something smaller because smaller is easier for me. I can just get the money for it real quick and go on about my business, right? And I'm talking to my sister on the phone, and my sister is telling me her testimony, this amazing testimony she had about getting her apartment. And as she's telling her testimony, I literally, at that moment, hear God prompting me Mm -hmm. to go and check out Cipriani. Mm -hmm. So my sister's on the phone telling me her testimony. So sometimes he will give you signs like that. But this this isn't like a every time situation for me. No, but you made the, the, the language. You said prompting. Prompting. Because you still, the action, you still have to move you on that You still got to prompt, you got to move on the prompting. Yeah, but that prompting, that's so, powerful. My sister's talking to me, I'm sending an email to the lady at Cipriani, yes. which for those of you who don't live in New York, Cipriani is like, think about the most premier venue in your city. Possible, like, yeah. it's it's like where the mayor would have his event, okay? Mm-hmm. So I emailed her and was like, my new, my thing is like, I never, I just say, Hey, I'm going to be by Cipriani today, mm-hmm. which I was all the way in Brooklyn. That's right, my right, thing. Right. Um, like I remember this. That, that's my thing. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to be there. If you're going to be there, I'll stop by today. Yeah. She hits me while my sister is still telling me her testimony on the phone. <laughs> yes. I'm going to be here. Come by. I'm like, gosh. <laughs> right, but that's my way of even cliff jumping with that because yeah. if I had given myself a few days to set up that appointment, yeah. I would have talked myself out of it. And so, the way that I push myself to make things happen is that I put myself up against deadlines mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. And so, I go, I meet with her anyway. Long story short, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this. And, and so, not only do I have to raise four times what my events cost. I have to raise even more because this event has to be profitable for me. Mm -hmm. And at this point, because of how much this event costs, we have to be six figure profitable, Mm -hmm. right? Which again, that's new for an event for me. So there were so many going after that. There were so many times when, and I don't know why I'm even getting on this. So maybe somebody needs to hear this, Yes. but there are, there were so many things that I came up against during that event where you know, even my title sponsor, I was like, they weren't giving me enough money for what they wanted. And for me to go back and ask them for more money, that's not really something you do with sponsors. Right, you don't right. go back and say, I need more money they, they after like... you've already committed to this. <laughs> yeah. But I went back and said, I need more money. Uh-huh. And I was shocked at, she said, we don't have more money. I said, well, this is what I need. And here's why I need it. And I laid it out. And I was so sure. I don't even know who that girl was in that meeting. But that girl was so <laughs> sure. Her name was Brandis, <laughs> but I was like having an out of moment moment experience yeah. I was like but I need the money like yeah. this is what it is and da, da, da. she ended up texting me that night and ended up giving me like over double what I had asked for mm-hmm. by text by the way and I was like I'm saving this text yes. somebody was yes. sending me this via text and then I remember <laughs> calling like a few other people and they said you know sorry we can't do it and I would go back to them and say hey I understand you can't do it but you you have to reconsider this and here is why so Cliff, cliff jumping will it will it will start there's like this adrenaline that comes with it that mm-hmm. drives you forward yeah. when you do something and you put yourself you set a goal that's like um non-negotiable yeah and you put a deadline with that goal oh my god and none of us like to do that we don't like to uh, we don't like to set a date for things we don't like to tell people what we're doing out loud and people say oh don't tell people you know what you're doing like you shouldn't tell people what you're doing i don't agree with that I totally disagree. i'm like just tell, so what because here's the thing if people become haters it can actually be a gift for you because you can start to hear like the things that they are saying oh you're not gonna be able to do this because then you can start to solve for the because absolutely it becomes Absolutely. like a, it becomes a gift, and for me, I've actually never had that happen but once. Yeah. Um, when I first started HFR, somebody told me, "Oh yeah, we tried to do this before; it didn't work." So, uh, like, you know, but um, yeah. but and that hurt my feelings. I ain't gonna lie, but I they, was very they, hurt by it. They offer you advantages. It does at the right time. It doesn't feel like it in the moment, but but and it, and then you can't even get caught up in that because honestly, there's so many more more things and and people rooting for you than against you. Yes, that you should never get caught. And I I I can even think Brandis of being in South Africa 
and someone saying that she came to the retreat Mm. to present something. Do you remember that? She came because she knew that I was going to be there and she wanted to talk to me about something um, and and also introduce herself to you for an opportunity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. And she had been trying to reach you. Oh, yes. Do you remember yes, this? I do remember I'm this. like, how could you forget? I how do remember this. I remember God this. delivered opportunity like in yeah. a different country. Like, yeah, I do just, remember this. Who would have thought? You didn't know her. I knew her, but we didn't expect yeah. to see her. But it's just an example of how he will he will bring it forward despite things that will try to set itself against you. Like, he will never allow those things to hold you back truly if you stick to your belief. Absolutely. If you put on your belief, then all the things will win. Absolutely. But you're right. If you hold on to the thing and stay steadfast... You know, and believe faithfully that, that you're supposed to get that number yes. or whatever it is that, that big ask is. I'm telling you, the provision, the way it he comes, it, it's even if it's a, even if it's like the last day. Yeah. I remember a, a, a few years ago, um, someone who was like a mentee for me. She was very frustrated, and she said, "Why does it seem like everything that you pray for, like it happens?" And for me, when I pray for it and start planning something, it doesn't happen. Mm. She said, "I mean." And she was like, she's, what did she say? Her words were basically something around the fact that, you know, she waited until the last week and this thing wasn't coming together. And so she was just going to have to cancel it. And I said, it's because I don't wait till the last week. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't, it, I don't stop. I believe that God is going to provide until yeah. the last moment. That's right. And I was like, I, and, and God knows I'm not, I'm no poster child for faith, but I do. I have seen his hand work and I've seen him do miraculous things through a cliff jump. And yeah. many of them, I've seen him come through in ways that I can't imagine whether it was, you know, be, me being on the phone with someone who said, well, Brandis, what do you need? Because we can't, I know one of the things you want is you want us to give you this money up front, but we don't do that. We give money half now and half mm-hmm. later. Mm-hmm. And then asking me again what I needed. Yeah. And me then saying, I need you to give me 100% of the money up front. As a matter of fact, can you send it tomorrow? Right, right, right. (laughs) Can you go ahead and FedEx that money right over time? (laughs) And and, and do you know that they did? Yes. And that was against all of their policy. They had never done it before. There's been so many times people said, we've never done this before. We've never done this before. But I just believe that God honors Mm -hmm. us, you know, when we take a chance and 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 cliff jump and and I can't say I've gotten I haven't gotten green lights for these things. It's just I felt like, hmm, this is something I should do. Yeah. And yeah. and then it's like not knowing where the resources were gonna come from, but God always provided. And and so why is that even important? It's because our faith, when we go through something and, and we we taking these cliff jumps, it's not just for us. Mm-mm. There's like so many other people who are impacted by the jumps that we take or don't take. That's right. Oh my goodness, the consequence. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the benefit. Both sides. And the benefit. Yeah. And and the biggest barrier to the whole thing is uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to get it. No. (laughs) I'm like, I'm just like, I can't even give you any comfort there. I cannot give you any comfort there because... You don't, there is, there, you don't get the certainty, but at the same time, like, it's kind of like living your life to the fullest in a way that you don't leave anything on the table or anything unexplored. Well, you know, that's the thing about, you know, cliff jumping equals faith walking. Right. It's an elevated way of living, thinking, and being. And um, you become so much more daring, and um, you know. And I, I, I have been heavily, aggressively um, pursuing this this boldness, this audacity, mm-hmm. where people say the nerve, mm. not negatively. Mm-hmm. Well, the nerve. Yes. Yeah, I've got nerve. I've got yes. nerve to ask for things that I know are due to me, or things that I know I will steward well. Yes. Like you asking for that money up front was not so you could abuse it, go out and go shopping. No. It was so that you could okay. steward the mission well. Right, exactly. And so that audacity, that courage comes with the knowing the why and how important it is and how necessary or critical these bridges are to seeing the outcome happen. And I think sometimes as vessels, we have to remember 
that if we if we live our lives as vessels by which a mission can flow, the minute we cork off the the, the hole, the funnel, everything mm. stops. Mm. And that's when we when we when we cork it with doubt, with unbelief, mm. with fear, with confusion, with maybe not mm-hmm. putting God on these preliminary deadlines mm-hmm. and saying, if you don't come through by May fifteenth, yeah, then I'm not gonna do it. Or if right. you don't show up with this amount of money, X, Y, and Z, that that's capping off the capability for any of that breakthrough to flow through you. Absolutely. So sometimes, sometimes I feel like maybe we do cliff jump in vain, some mm. of us, because we don't see it through. Mm. We get off That's the cliff, so we don't like it, then we try to find a little a little ravine or a boat. <laughs> <laughs> we start calling everyone. Can, 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 can we get out this water? Yeah. It's a little too deep for me. I don't like it out here. X, Y, and Z. I don't like it out there either. No one likes it out there. I don't, I don't think Jesus liked it out there. <laughs> you know, I think he was doing his best to take a good nap. But he was so irritated when they woke him up to talk about a storm. He's like, y'all going to wake me. Yeah, we knew we were running to storms. We're in right, deep water. Right. We knew that. What comes with the deep water? Deep yes, waves. Absolutely. So you know you're going to run into some friction and some chaos. I don't think anyone likes it. You don't, it's I, not about liking, right? No. I don't, I don't like it. Like no. I'm not, t- I'm not telling people, oh, cliff jump because it's gonna be enjoyable. Right. I'm not telling you. I'm gonna <laughs> tell you up front. It is not gonna be totally enjoyable. But no. man, when you see God yeah. move, yeah, whew, it's fulfilling. You know, for there's sure. been so many times where I've done events and I was like, these people, fashion people, are kiss kissing and hugging and having a fabulous old time in the middle of a miracle they have no idea <laughs> yes. they have no idea that they're yes. air kissing in the mirror in a miracle yeah. and that has happened so mm-hmm. many times i can think there was uh, one time when i was like okay i knew god had told me okay this is go for this space there was this space um at this building and i said okay i'm gonna go for the space we were one and a half weeks out for that space. I, to this day, still don't know how that space, how we paid for it. Because mm. the money we got in and what everything cost does not match to this day. Yeah. I have no clue. Yeah. I honestly, I, I'm like, some, I don't know. Some miracles happened. Yeah. And even even down to, I remember I was sitting in front, I had parked in front of my, um, in front of my house. And there was this one brand we were waiting to come on board. And God was like, send them cupcakes. And I was like, I'm already in a deficit for this space. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm going to send them cupcakes. I did it right there sitting in my car across the street from my, before I even came into my apartment because I didn't want to get distracted. And I sent it. And I remember like maybe a day later, I sent it to two people. One person, I sent it to them. They knocked off $10,000 off the venue. Mm. The next day, she said, mm. I'm going to give this to you. It's $25,000. I'm going to give it to you for $15,000. Mm. Cupcakes were $40. See? Ooh, okay. Jesus. Then the <laughs> other person ended up saying, okay, you know what? We're going to come on board. They end up, again, It was he showed me, send, send them cupcakes. Mm-hmm. And the other person ended up coming on board. I can't remember. It was like ten or $15,000. But again, it's, it's like, it's just, cliff jumping is just walking by faith. Yeah. It's no, it's no, nothing complicated. Mm-hmm. That's really all it is. Mm-hmm. And seeing just how far and where your life can be. When you actually follow through a lot of times on the things you know you're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. Because we don't see the full way. I didn't see see my full way through to the things that are happening. Honestly, this year, I don't even know. I'm just kind of like, I'm just watching God. I'm like a fly on the wall because there are new things that are happening every single week that I'm like, really? Yeah. What? Last yeah. week, I thought I was having a meeting with somebody in HR. It was the doggone president of this huge company mm. but I didn't know I was at the place where people would actually set me up with, with the, the president, president. yeah I didn't even look. <laughs> and I got to the meeting like you crazy child <laughs> you need it you know like yes but yes. I couldn't have even imagined some of the things that I see God doing but none of them what happened without cliff jumps and I'm still cliff jumping I have a text now somebody don't want to pay for something I'm charging them for yeah. and I have to go back to them and it's this huge fancy brand and be like okay well Here's what we can't do. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a cliff jump for me because that's not comfortable yeah. for me, Sybil. No, it's not about the comfort. It's about you committing to the outcomes, committing yes. to the mission. And and honestly, that was so crazy. I think what stumps so many people, Brandis, is, is the process part because we get so caught up in the process. And I talk about this on the Grace Podcast, actually. If you're not listening, you yes. should be checking out the Grace Podcast. But we talk about on the Grace Podcast, you know, how um, in Habakkuk, 
going straight scripture, it talks about writing a vision and making it plain, not the process. Mm -hmm. And so we get caught up in the how when we can't quite see the roadmap. I think men get caught up in the vision and they write that and then they're like, all right, who's going to come do this? Mm -hmm. I got the vision. Mm -hmm. Let me get five people in a room and show them the vision and let them figure out the process. Women get caught in the process. And so we ball up the vision. Because we feel like the process is too overwhelming. Yes. And that's where we get stumped. It's in the process because, you know, we have to become so relentless and committed to by any means necessary. Yes. That opens us up to whoever's going to come to the door with the blessing. Whoever's yes. going to create the opportunity. Whoever's going to participate. Who's going to participate in the vision? Yes. Who's going to be a part of this process? Yep. And us being willing, like you said, you talk about presenting outwardly being able to vocalize what our mission is to people Mm -hmm. not being afraid to say it out loud Mm -hmm. this is my crazy audacious mission yeah this is where this is where i am right now and that's and that's not always easy it's not easy it's It's essential though it's it's essential but it's not always easy i mean just the other week i was sitting there and somebody was like so how much is that going to cost and i was like 12 million dollars and like I never said $12 million out loud to somebody in terms yeah. of like, you know, like, yeah. but that's what it's going to cost. That was <laughs> like, honest. It's, it's like, this is, this is what's yeah. honest. So then they can either say, okay, well, and then they did say, can you figure out how to get yeah. this down? So it's like, what if there are all these boxes? And it's like, what is that? These are all the blessings that you left behind because you never even tried to go for them. Yeah. Well, let's go for an example, Brandis. I, you know, I'm thinking about just a couple of weeks ago, we were invited to a dinner um, with own and at the, and in my mind with the president of own right with the president of own co- co- um, connections and conversations um, I imagined a large dinner I imagined a large reception I thought 57 500 people you know uh, 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 I don't know I expected a large gathering of people um, only to get to a very intimate mm-hmm. intimate gathering mm-hmm. a small table mm-hmm. of people who were invited to have dinner with the president of own and she shared her uh, mission for the next stage of content with the network and we all talked about content and what's missing and what's there and advertising etc and at the end of the dinner the host asks well, what's, what's one thing we can expect to see from you next year if we meet at this table I had an opportunity at that point. I can say, you expect to see some compelling brand strategy. <laughs> right. <laughs> With some of the world-leading brands. Right. Because, because that's what I'm known for and that's what I'm accustomed to representing. Right. Or I could have said what I did say, which was a new vertical that I am cliff jumping into that I believe mm-hmm. God is showing me. And when it got around, and everyone at the table that I know knows me for something, one thing, one right, thing right, right. maybe two things with the great girlfriends. But I said television. Mm. I said television. Mm. And I heard, mm. Mm. Right. <laughs> and the room could have gone, mm. But the room said, mm. Right. To the point that I ended up on a conversation on a call with the chief marketing officer mm-hmm. of OWN to talk about that one thing. Right. But like you said, you know, we have to be willing to represent it. We have to be willing to possess it, to own it. I'm not possessing it just for me. I'm possessing it for every great girlfriend who has expectation, who wants to pivot, who wants to shift, who wants to represent every comma, every hyphen, every semicolon behind their name, whatever it is that God is calling from us. And he's going to tell you to jump off of one cliff. You do that cliff well, he's going to give you a bigger, bigger, bigger cliff. They don't stop. <laughs> they don't stop. I wish <laughs> that I came to the, sometimes to the end of my cliffs. Brandis keeps talking about this. It's it, it's an urban myth. I, I don't it's, think it's happening. I, I, no, no. Brandis <laughs> keeps talking about. I, I'm just ready to lay on the beach. I am. With a good book <laughs> with some sand in my toes. No, ma'am. I am, ma'am. I really I, am. Okay. Well, you but, know what? Call me. Call me. <laughs> I, I, but but he, the requirement. But you but just. I don't. Brandis. I and I get it. Though. I think you want it, but I think you are called to maybe sit on that beach for like weekends or kind of a couple of days off here and there, maybe three day weekends. I just don't see that your life story evolving into this Sandy beach story. So nice. I don't, I don't think so. It's so nice. I don't think it'd be nice for you. I think it's fun for you to imagine that because that feels like a safe, <laughs> quiet, calm place right. for you. But if anything, your beach going to have many waves. <laughs> so I'm deep sand. You. 
it's gonna, it's not gonna be the same thing. But but I let her dream like that. I'm like, yeah, cool, that's great. <laughs> yes, friend, it's with a book, a big book to read. A lot of yes, books. yeah, lots of books and deep sand for sure. You're gonna have fun on that that isolated beat because it just it's just not it's not the life of a cliff jumper because you never stop giving or serving with your mission, with your heart, with your vesselship. Yeah. And once I think you have expanded to a space where you can be trusted with more. I feel like God continues to put more on you to whom much is given, much is required. And I think there's a fulfillment of that more, that much that never stops taking place, which means you get better, better beaches. Yeah. 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 (laughs) You get better beaches. (laughs) Right. Right. But, but you still don't, you know, I just want you to not, I don't don't see you. You don't don't see it happening, Mm -hmm. but great girlfriends. Let me tell you, I know. I know. Y'all got that feeling in your chest. I actually got it in my chest it's right now. Yeah. I'm not in my chest. I literally have a knot in my chest because I'm afraid of what cliff jump I'm about to be asked to take right. next. Right. So I have the knot in my chest. You're probably driving or on the treadmill or at your desk at work or wherever you're listening to or us. We're sitting here looking at Brandis like I am with my eyes bulging <laughs> like I, but I know you got the I know you've got the lump in your chest because I feel it. I literally feel it right now too. Um but it's worth it. It's so worth it. And there's so many people who's dependent on it. And we talked about, you know, doing things and it being like our great girlfriends. But it's also like what we leave for our kids and our nieces and our nephews and our yeah. family. And um, we don't know how our cliff jump is connected to the next generation or connected to your niece's or nephew's next opportunity or your grandchild's next opportunity or your mom's next. You just don't know how things are connected. So I am, um, I think, I think, I mean, look, I've given them plenty enough given, reason yeah. to take the cliff jump. I do a cliff jump course about every six to eight weeks. And I am going to have one. I only take, I don't take any more than 15 students at a time. Um, I'm going to do one specifically for the great girlfriends. It's going to be May 19th and 20th. There's two parts because the first part of our cliff jump is figuring out what's holding us back. That's our first night. And then the second night is when we actually start to move into where we are and where we're headed. And um, we have some really exciting surprises that happen that night that people like, they cry and they they have all kind of moments that next day where they can actually see what their life will look like after the cliff jump. Mm. And it's really special. Why haven't I been invited? Um, you have been invited. Civil, don't start with me. I've never been invited. I'm Civil, so invited. Civil, Civil, Whatever. Civil, do not. Just tell us where to do, jump in because I'm going to be one of the not, first students this time. Do, do not start. <laughs> you can join. You can go. You can go to joincliffjump.com mm-hmm. to sign up. Um, joincliffjump.com and sign up and then um, I'll send you an email like the next day and give you all the details and all the things that I want you to do to prepare for our two nights that we're going to have together because they are nights because I am a mom right? and so they happen as the sky go to sleep at 8pm to 10pm both nights we do it um, virtual so this is not an in person so no matter where you are in the world you can join um, this cliff jump and I'm super excited about working with you on this I can Wait, so Civil offer Civil. You guys have probably already taken Civil's course at this moment, so you have your strategy in place. Yeah, you know what you're doing. I'm not sure when Civil's gonna offer her next class, but then once you have the strategy in place and you know what you're doing, you actually got a cliff jump. You actually have to take action. And can I just say, because Brandis is masterful at teaching about cliff jumping. Those of you that think it's just for business, it's not. It's for romance. It's for it's, friendship. Yeah. It's for life. It's for life. But any it's place where you feel like you're on the sideline and you want to jump in, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. I love that. It's but you're working. Approach. This is not a brand is talking to you, by the way. This yeah. entire class, you are working. Yeah. We have a full worksheet that we're all working on at the same time together, both nights. Yeah. So if you want something where you just want to hear me talk the whole time, I mean, I will be talking and laughing and having a good time. Listen to <laughs> podcast but if you're ready to actually work and ready to actually make this cliff jump a real thing then go to joincliffjump.com 
I love it. Workshops are really fun to do. I love it. I know. I, I'm I excited. We love y'all great girlfriends. Love you so much. Can't wait to hear all of your reviews on the Cliff Jump Workshop. And we look forward to seeing you at the Great Girlfriends Conference. Peace. Hey, great girlfriends, it's that time of year again. We're inviting you to join us for the 2019 Great Girlfriends Doers and Disruptors Conference, June 13th through 15th in New York City. Our three-day event includes exciting receptions, life-changing panels, connections, masterminds, and more. This year, we had over 100 women from around the world connect with like-minded girlfriends and create incredible memories. Now it's your turn to be a part of this exclusive event. Visit our website, www.thegreatgirlfriendsconference.com to grab a ticket for yourself and for your greatest girlfriend. We hope to see you there. We could not end this podcast without thanking our amazing husbands. Yes, thank you, Kwaku. And thank you so much, Rich Daniel. And our beautiful children. Thank you, Sam and Dylan. And thank you, Miss Sky Daniel. And thank you to all of you great girlfriends for trusting us as your go-to source for everything life, love, and laughter. You can check us out on our social, on Instagram. The Great Girlfriends. On Twitter. The underscore great GFS. And on Facebook the great girlfriends and please make sure that you join our facebook group which is over 16,000 women strong absolutely and make sure you listen every single wednesday on itunes spotify podcast bean podcast republic google play and every other podcasting service absolutely be sure to post your questions share with your friends keep Keep listening listening and and keep being being a great great girlfriend. girlfriend i'm sybil and i'm brandon and we're signing off peace peace